Hello friends, my name is Fanro, and today I want to show you another location where you can simply grind mobs for half an hour to an hour on end and it'd still be worth it to do so. I have already slightly teased this location in yesterday's footage as we're going to be farming destroyers in Ember Bay. More specifically, the ones near the scratch gate waypoint where the squid base is on the map. This is in the second episode of Living World Season 3, so you will need to have that one unlocked. If you don't have any Living World Seasons unlocked yet, don't worry, the next time I'm posting a video like this, it will be a Corteria one. Now, what makes this farm an interesting one is a few things actually. These destroyers themselves have pretty low health, which is a requirement I try to set for any of these videos, because the more mobs we can kill, the more loot we're going to get. Next, we also want enemies that consistently drop loot. If you run around through the different maps in the open world, you might already have noticed not every enemy type has the tendency to drop as much loot as the ones I'm covering in these videos. And finally, the reason I often post living world locations is because of the fact that when you do get a loot drop, you also get unbound or volatile magic as well. You can make this farm even more interesting as you can buy a boost from the vendor near the entrance of the map that allows mobs to drop karma every now and then as well. It's less consistent drops than in Living World Season 4, but definitely still a bonus. And with that out of the way, let's take a look at what these destroyers tend to drop. They drop a junk item called Firestones, so equipping a Jade Sliver bot could definitely be worth it if you're saving up slivers to unlock other currencies. If you have no need for Jade Slivers, make sure to equip a Might or Magic Trophy protocol instead. Their main drop are tier 5 and tier 6 claws, and just like the white mantle farm I posted last week, they also tend to drop 1 to 4 piles of black seeds as well. Flax is one of the more expensive types of plants or seeds in the game, so it's always a nice bonus when we get them. What isn't documented on the wiki for the specific area I'll be farming in this video, however, is that they also have a very rare chance to drop destroyer lodestones. These aren't all that common, but you can expect one or two to drop every time you farm here, depending on your luck. Each lodestone being worth 60 silver, this is a very nice bonus. As you can see in the footage, I am starting off at the scratch gate waypoint and run north towards the clearing in front of the volcano. Once we've cleared all the mobs out, we make a short U-turn, kill some oozes on the way and then start all over again. When I happen upon young Karka, I tend to kill them as well, as they drop tier 5 or 6 blood, as well as Karka shells worth a couple of silver each. There is somewhat of a downside for this route though. If there is another player or two players farming here, it usually isn't that big of a deal as the mobs respawn fast enough, or if you're in sync, they have just about enough HP so both of you can tag them for loot. If this location is buzzing with activity however, there are two alternatives on this island I can offer you. To the west of our location, there is even more destroyers that you can farm. These are mostly veterans though, so they'll take a bit longer to kill, which will impact the amount of loot you can amass over the course of your farm here. On the flip side, I tend to get more destroyer loot stones from these veteran mobs, so if you farm those, make sure you have enough birds to kill them in a few seconds. Another location would be inside the volcano north of the scratch gate. Mobs inside the volcano have very low HP and drop decent loot as well. Somewhat of a bonus around our main farming location is that it's rife with possible map events. North of the waypoint where we're farming, a destroyer fissure might spawn. With this event, a mass amount of destroyers will spawn too. You can either kill these systematically, or if you have enough mitigation and you're brave enough, you can attack the fissure directly and all of the mobs will start converging towards you. Only do this if you have access to blocks, condition cleanses or good sustain though. A second event is with this crit near the waypoint. You can pay them 5 gold in total to complete an event that funds a new treasure hunt. You can technically pay 5 gold yourself and get 40k event experience in a few seconds, but in my opinion that's a pretty steep cost. If there's multiple players around of course, you won't need to cough up all the cash yourself. And this event leads to another event chain. And there's two types of treasure hunts. The first one takes them over the hill on the northeast side where we're actually farming most of our destroyers. If you see this, make sure to help the event along as it tends to despawn a lot of the destroyers we are farming. 
The second one is directly to the east and will eventually end with an event where you kill a champion Karka. This one dies relatively fast and awards decent loot, so when I see the notification, I choose to help out more often than not. And that brings me to my final point, the mobs you need to watch out for. You will be fighting three types of destroyers. The first one are rotting destroyers, which are the easiest of the bunch, as they don't have any dangerous attacks and spawn little minions that die in a single hit. The second type are the death touch destroyers, which are the flying kind. They have one dangerous attack. They tend to fly upwards in the air and evade all of your attacks, followed by them swooping down with a barrage of three projectiles that deal quite a bit of damage. In the footage, you often will see me either dodge out of this, press hammer 2 to reflect back the projectiles to them, or press hammer 4 to block the projectiles. When you're doing the destroyer fissure event, expect to be bombarded with 12 to 15 of these projectiles, which will one-shot you if you don't deal with them accordingly. And the final enemy type are the Vine Touch Destroyers. These don't hurt as much as the previous ones, but they do root you into place. And this can be very deadly when you're fighting them together with the flying kind. The root will prevent you from dodging, so if you don't have a way to deal with the projectiles from the flying destroyers, prepare to smash that heal button. And that gives you about all the information you should need for this farm and brings me to the end of the video. I have many more locations and types of loot we can target and will release a new one every few days or so. That way you can swap locations every 30 minutes to an hour to prevent getting hit by the diminishing returns mechanics in this game. If you have any other questions, make sure to leave them down below. If you liked it, please like this video and your subscription would mean the world to me.